Mad Dog Vachon, Tiny Mills, Nick Bockwinkle, Dr. X, Vern Gagne, The Crusher. Wrestling in the Twin Cities for years and years was huge. If you came to Minneapolis, I mean, you made it. Channel 2 is taping in here this evening. You meet so many different people, and it's a great place. When we're out there, people feel better about the neighborhood. I just don't want to die young. This place saved my life. Small towns have as much as it is. White House is cool, am I right? Yeah. You can play hockey at any age. If I made a year old, I would die if I couldn't do this. Hennepin County Emergency Department. Feels weird, looks good. We don't just grow vegetables, we grow community. Tate's Rolling. <laughs> Tate's Rolling is made possible in part by Target Stores, Dayton's, and Mervyn's through the Dayton Hudson Foundation, the Northwest Area Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by the St. Paul Company, providing insurance products and services throughout the world. And now, introducing his opponents, they allowed him a reprieve from the mental hospital in St. Peter. Ladies and gentlemen, he weighs 235 pounds. Horace the Psychopath! Oh, wait a second, ladies and gentlemen, we're set to go. Horace the Psychopath hits the ring. Oh! And he nails Mr. Dynamic with that clothesline above beheaded him. And look at Horace, he's psyching up now. He hears those cheers. It's all right to the eyes. You know, it's amazing how many people in modern day society will identify with a bona fide psychopath. Horace, a psychopath, having a little lunch, courtesy of the forehead of Mr. Dynamic. Well, I know he's one of your favorite wrestlers, isn't he? He always comes into this building and he's always hyped up. It depends on what kind of medication they've got in our. I'm Mick Karsh, and I am the host of Slick Mix Body Slam Review, a professional wrestling television program. And I also announce at wrestling matches around the state of Minnesota, various independent promotions. Wait a second. Now, this might be it. This could be a short night. What? For We're Mr. only 30 Dynamic. seconds in. Wait a second. Horace is going to have none of this. He's following Dynamic back to the locker room area, and he's taking him back to the ring. Welcome back to Horace's Playground. Horace the Psychopath, bizarre character. Probably as close to Mad Dog Vachon in style as anybody on the local scene. This was a guy who's about five foot eight, 220 pounds, but as tough as nails. He had more hair on his chest than a gorilla, shaved bald head and two teeth. Oh, he nailed him! Minneapolis has always been synonymous with professional wrestling. If you came to Minneapolis, I mean, you made it. This was really on the map. And in the 1950s, when there were no other major league sports to compete with, wrestling was it. 1970s, it started to die down just a little bit. Late 1980s, it died again. And it kept dying until, you know, the point where you are now. It got oversaturated on television, and now, as I said, any of these independent cards, if they get 150 people or 200 people, in an arena, they're ecstatic. I want to get people to the matches. I try to explain ad nauseum that the wrestlers that are on the independent scene work so hard. I mean, they go out there and they're into the seats and they're right next to you and they're accessible after the matches. They're hammering each other right and left and there's nobody there to see them. Oh, picks them up by the throat, for heaven's sake. Dynamic all the way. Oh, oh no. He'll be singing soprano. So we'll show footage of the matches uh, from Waconia or Gibbon, Minnesota or Mankato or whatever it is. And the wrestlers that we parade now in front of the people are the local talent. This goes back to my wanting to get people to the arenas to see it at the grassroots level. Oh, let's go. Here we go, Cannonball. Oh, that's got to do it to see the guys that are going to be future superstars if they get a break. When you win the belt, you get a Porsche for a present. Now entering the ring area, the NPW champion, Luscious Lenny Lane. Hello, I'm Luscious Lenny Lane, the MPW's world's heavyweight champion. Accompanied by his manager, Mortimer Plumtree. Keep it down. Get the camera. My manager, who I'd like to bring in right now, 
gave me a present the day after I won the belt. More detail. You know, there are just rewards for achieving the greatness that this man has in such a short period of time. Such luxuries for beautiful people like the luscious one, the one night stand luscious Lenny Lane. He's the only one. Only one. Unfortunately, both of my parents are deceased, and I think they were up there saying, hey, go for it, do the best you can, you know, stuff like that. But as far as my family, they were leery at it at first, but now that I'm raking in the big cash and carrying the gold around, let them touch it once in a while, look at the reflections, they're all for it. Lenny Lane is probably the greatest discovery in the business today. He has everything it takes. He's got the looks, the talent, the charisma. To the gym, where the professional wrestlers are made and the weak are turned away. Luscious Lenny Lane, I think, is, is a kid who is absolutely going to be a major talent in this business. His style is very reminiscent of Nick Bockwinkel's style. Nick is absolutely my all-time favorite wrestler. Early, in the early days of wrestling, you'd have a guy screaming and yelling and, and threatening that he was going to kick a wrestler's butt and blah, blah, blah. Nick came out and said he was going to kick a wrestler's butt, but he didn't scream and yell. He used the multi-million dollar words, and, and that alienated him from a lot of the wrestling fans. You know, they wanted, they wanted to see him get whipped every week. Do you have a photo ID? No, 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 man. I'm a very hated figure in professional wrestling. Because of my good looks, you know, we got the money, we got the good looks, we got the cars, we got the girls. People don't like that. See, I bring a lot of women to the match. Women follow, they hear I'm on the card, they flock to the matches to see me. These are a man's best friend, these mirrors. They're my best friend, I know that. Always make sure you're looking good, you know? The working out is a big thing, you know? Not a lot of people do it. They want the easy way out. They want to take the easy way. I've always worked out. I've always been hardcore. A little bit into bodybuilding, but always into the heavier weights. <laughs> I've been doing it for a year and three months now. I was a quick learner. I was in training camp three weeks and I had my first match. It hurts, it burns. But that's what you need to do if you want to be the champ like me. Well, what was the first match like? Were you nervous or? Oh, I was very nervous. You walk out and people cheer for you. You know, they don't know who you are really yet in the area because I'm new. But it was a successful. I won my first match. In fact, I won my first eight matches, I believe. I'll go get a curl bar now. I realized I saw so much potential in Lenny. Uh, here's a guy who every time out tries new moves. I have seen him try backflips off the top rope, what we call a moonsault, without ever having practiced it. That he's daring, and I think that's what it takes. This happens to me my barbell heavy day. Small amounts of reps, hopefully to stimulate some kind of growth to succeed in this business. Somebody who's willing to put their own body on the line and try new things every time to succeed, this guy is going somewhere. Oh yeah, you're always learning. Every time you step in the ring, you face maybe somebody new, you learn something from that person. Like a lot of the brain wonders, I call them, because you wonder where their brains are half the time when they're in the ring. They're gonna try and move to me twice? It's not gonna happen. I smartened up like, you know, I'm one of the smarter wrestlers. Not only do I have the physique, but I've also got the wits to outwit my opponent. That's what makes me so successful. Lenny, why don't you come on out, Lenny Lane. Give the ladies from Mankato, Minnesota, a little treat. And his opponent from Northeast Minneapolis, Billy Blaze. These guys are real superheroes in person, flesh and blood. If you want to be the champ, you got to beat the champ. Well, I'm going to beat the hell out of the champ tonight. Oh we don't need a referee, kid. You don't Let's get it on. No, you don't have to get in there. Listen here, Billy Blaze. You like, can say this and you can say that, but when it comes down to it, I'm wearing the gold, not you. Len Lenny? Well, I'm the referee, and the rules are, are, are well, it's a 10 count outside the ring, the count of three, and of course, you're, you're out, and count of five, you're disqualified, and other than that, everything goes. Yeah! Well, they try to get away. They, they got foreign objects they hit each other with. They like to hit each other with, like, can openers and things like that, and, you know, gouge you in, in the forehead, and the blood runs in your eyes, and you can't see, and it uh, creates all kinds of mayhem. 
It's very hard for the referee, you know, because I can't see everything. You know, I can only see one thing at a time. Wrestlers are tremendous psychologists with what they can do with a crowd. I remember, again, when I was a youngster, Mad Dog Vashon. We were at a television taping at the old Calhoun Beach Hotel for the AWA. Dead or in the doornail, you could have heard a pin drop in the place, and Vashon was in the ring, and he turned to the crowd and he said, Shut up! Now, nobody had said anything, but they erupted. All of a sudden, for the next hour and a half, they were screaming and they were yelling and they were absolutely in an uproar. And I realized right then the power that these wrestlers have over a crowd is amazing. I love the crowd. Yeah, I'm sure they get involved. That's what they're here for, to holler and scream. Back in the 60s when they used to stab us and hit with the hat pins and uh, there's cases where they tried to shoot us and things like that. They're, they're actually much better now than they used to be. Thank goodness. Oh, almost dropped him right on his head. I think there's a lot of times that the promotions have gone too far. Each promotion has tried to outdo the other one. They've tried to go one up. There's been times where wrestlers have come out in a Santa Claus suit and attacked another wrestler at Christmas time. And then the camera will pan in on these three and four year old kids sitting in the front row and they're shaking and they're sobbing because they've just seen Santa Claus attack somebody. The nature of this business is at times it can get pretty violent. People are getting hit with chairs, people are getting hit with tables. Um, my son is three years old and I don't find it appropriate for uh, children that age watching uh, wrestling. I think there's, there's a point where kids are ready to accept certain things about entertainment or sports. I just don't think that's a very good environment for a three-year-old to be around or to be watching. Oh, man! Right to the solar plexus. Got a one, feet are on the ropes, and he got him. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and still Northern Premier Champion, Luscious Woody Lane. Right here. here he is. Get a good look at him, because soon he's going to be all over the world. There's a real man for you. There's I champion. was intrigued by the good versus bad. Let him see it a little bit. Yes, sir, I'm happy today. Woo! To me, it's the male version of the soap opera. Come on! You tune in week after week to find out what's going to happen next. Who's going to be fighting with who? Who's going to run into the ring unexpectedly? It's always new and it's always exciting. We've got collectible memorabilia, wrestling programs from the early 70s through the 80s. We've got the videotapes, Mankito Madness, Volume 1 and 2. Color photos of a lot of the wrestlers, past and present. What are some of the big sellers? Kenny J t-shirts today. This is a real crowd favorite these days. They just crowd around him for his autographs. And now, Northern Premier Wrestling presents a man who is a true legend in the sport of professional wrestling, the Sidebuster, Kenny J. I'm uh, Sidebuster Kenny J, and I've been there Sidebuster for many, many years. As uh, everybody know, I've uh, been a professional wrestler for 30 some odd years. Okay. My business. And I've also been in the landscaping business for a while, and now we're in the lawn maintenance. And then Wally Carbo, he's actually gave me the name Sodbuster, and it, uh, it's just stuck with me for years and years, and, I, and right now I'm, uh, I'm really I'm just known as the Sodbuster. We don't we ain't doing much uh, laying sod no more, but uh, I still carry the name. <laughs> We have been married 32 wonderful years. <laughs> when people ask, what does your husband do for a living? I always said, he owns his own business and he is a professional wrestler. And it's always, well, what is his name? And I say, Kenny Sodbuster J. Kenny, has, he's kind of done a Vern Gagne. You know, he's retired and unretired about 47 times. And uh, Kenny's still got in his blood. And the amazing thing about Kenny J, he probably looks better now than he did 10 years ago. And I don't know what it is. There's a fountain of youth somewhere. 
Uh, well, I actually started wrestling in Milwaukee. I went to a school. Uh, it was a professional wrestling school. You had to learn how to fall, how to land on your feet instead of your back. Because if you land on your back, you know right away you can knock the wind out. I went to the school for three months and I, I was kind of fed up with it. And I left, uh, came down to Minnesota and I uh, joined the carnival. That was really rough because there we took on all comers and anybody could come up and challenge us, you know. I would be up on a, like a stage and then he would ask if there's anybody out there who want to come up and challenge one of his boys, you know. So then it would be farmers, you know, or anybody. They'd come up and they'd say, uh, I want to take him on and they'd point to me, you know. And if he didn't beat me in two minutes, then, uh, you know, he didn't get anything. How's it going? Good. I don't think I ever did get beat because, you know, two minutes I can run around the ring for that long. <laughs> okay. I think one of the real big things when I was a kid watching wrestling was that we were still fighting a war with the Japanese and the Germans, but I should throw the Russians in there too. Professional wrestling was loaded with the all-American good guy getting into the ring with the bad guy Russian. Now you've got real diabolical characters. When I was a kid, it was he was just a hard-nosed athlete. I came up with the, the sod grip. You get him in the, in, the, in the headlock, kind of, but you grab him by the chin and you bring it up, and then I get the old thumb. And it goes right underneath the chin, but it's a very tender spot. And as I lift it up, they just, I give, I give. The bad guy of yesterday might pick up a chair once in a while and hit his opponent with it. Today, they get the popcorn vendor on the way to the ring, and then, You'll have them going up into the seats, into the balconies. Uh, it's a lot more violent. It's a lot more uh, bizarre, certainly, than it was when I was growing up. Back then, it was, wrestlers were wrestlers. Those were guys, big dudes, you know. I mean, they were lumberjacks. They'd come right off the field, you know, right off the streets, you know. You know, even me, I was, I was a farmer up in Holdingford, Minnesota. And nowadays, you know, they're all real muscle bound, you see them, you know. Uh, it, they don't seem to do as much wrestling as they did back then. You know, now, uh, I mean, you walk around with a two by four or something, you know. <laughs> In a match that could end up being one of the best grudge matches of the century, ladies and gentlemen, the student versus the teacher, the uncle versus the nephew, Kenny the Sod Buster J is here today. And he will be taking on the Brentwood bad boy, his nephew, J.B. Trask. I am J.B. Trask. I am the hottest wrestler not only in Northern Premier Wrestling, but in the world today. J.B. Trask is another, another fellow. I mean, this is, uh, this is a sick puppy. There's a great adrenaline rush when you walk through that curtain and the people, whether they're booing you or cheering you, it's, 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 it's a natural high. And that's what I love about it. I love beating people up, too. J.B. Trask, I think, thrives on being hated. If the booing and the jeering in the building is deafening, he's in his element. I don't need the fans. I don't need little kids wanting autographs. I don't need none of that. No, I'm not real popular with the crowd. And you know, I really don't care, either. The other side of the coin, I don't think Kenny J has ever heard anybody boo him in his life. How you doing? Uh, My name's Jeffrey. Hey, what up? Uh, yeah. hey, Kenny J. How you doing? There you go. Come on. Put him up there. What do you like about Kenny J? Well, he's, he's good. pretty old and he's good. My God, I gotta shake some hands here. He's old and he's good. good he's for good for his, his age. age. Yeah. Really good for his age. What's your name? Pete? Ryan. Sam? <laughs> Joe? I got them all, huh? Do you guys know what a side buster is? No. <laughs> okay, who wants to go in the ring first? Me! Me! Kenny J is my uncle. Everybody in Minnesota knows who Sod Buster Kenny J is. And uh, I guess you could say he broke me into the business. He never liked my style of wrestling. He always said that I always took shortcuts. Some people say I cheat. I kind of look at it as doing whatever it takes to win. This is a very dangerous cat, and uh, I know he's got something going with Kenny J right now that's going to explode and erupt. Is, you know, he just, he never appreciated anything I ever did, and it really bugged me. And he, he, he never even acknowledged that I was, I was his nephew. Kenny J uh, kept it very quiet from the wrestling public that he was the uncle of J.B. Trask, and I think primarily because he was ashamed of J.B., but that's neither here nor there. He does a different 
type of wrestling compared to me. I'm the clean, the, the hole for hole, the in and out of hold, and he just loves the hitting, the kicking, and the hair pulling. And Kenny was a great scientific wrestler, only broke the rules when he had to. JB, on the other hand, completely the opposite. I mean, he wouldn't know a rule book from a phone book. I got hurt. I hit my head against the ring post. And I felt really bad, so I helped him in the dressing room. And Kenny openly exhibited his concern for JB, which kind of stunned everybody. We didn't know why in the world would Kenny J care about this guy. And then he came out, he thought I was seriously injured, and he starts spilling that I'm his nephew, and I never wanted it exposed. Okay, then JB come up there, and I thought, boy, this is going to be great. He's going to apologize. He's going to probably shake my hand and everything. He got exposed. I got upset. Just then, he gave me the goddamn clothesline. Boom, he clobbered his own uncle. I went through the floor. He kept kicking me and everything, and now we got a grudge match. Bah, we got a feud going. Kenny J is an, you know, he's, he's getting on in years, but he's an athlete, and he's a competitor, and even at his age, and even, I don't care who you are, if you go up and punch Kenny J, he's gonna get up fighting. Nephew and niece, I, I don't care what he is, because we're going all out on this one. I mean, there's going to be uh, hitting and uh, kicking and uh, eye gouging and hair pulling. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you who's coming right on on top on that one. And that's sodbuster Kenny J. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Cox along with Christian Dady, and this is the one everybody has been waiting for. Sodbuster Kenny J going in the ring against his very own nephew. Now entering the ring, the Brentwood Bad Boy. This is the new generation coming up now, and that's exactly what I am, a, a new generation style of wrestler, and I'm going to kick his butt today. You've seen him for decades. He is the uncle of this man in the ring and the teacher, the legend, the sidebuster, Kenny J. This match is scheduled for one fall with a 60-minute time limit. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine I keep my eyes wide open all the time I keep the ends out for the tide that finds Because you're mine I walk the line Let me tell you something, Uncle Kenny All these people are going to witness The final match of the Sodbuster Kenny J, huh? Let's hear it for that! We have seen family feuds on several occasions, but we have never seen bad family blood like we are seeing here tonight between J.B. Trask and the Sodbuster Kenny J. For 13 years, nobody knew the relationship. The last time out, J.B. Trask turned on his own uncle. Kenny said, anytime, any place, I want this kid, he's got him tonight. This is a tough, tough man. He hasn't won a lot of matches, but the matches he's won have been big ones. Oh, and he's running the tables. Oh, he kicked a 60-yard field goal that time. Kenny J has been in control of this one almost from the onset here. Referee Eddie Sharkey hasn't had a lot to do, but ask JB if he wants to call it a night. Oh, and look at Plumtree on the ring apron. Oh, Mortimer Plumtree, the bug on the windshield of pro wrestling, who at any given moment will stick his stinking nose in any match. For J.B. Trask, my goal right now is to make sure that at any cost, he gets rid of Kenny J. What a shock that is. What a stretch for Plumtree to hand Trask something. Four and out to... He nailed right in the throat of sodbuster Kenny J. The fans picking up the chant of Cheater, and you know something? That is music to the ears of J.B. Trask. You stand those punks, just keep it down right now. How many times in one night can this idiot interfere? We need another referee, or we need Mortimer Plumtree out of this sport. Kenny! He's rolling him over! Bust the clap! This is a submission hole! Kenny J's got it locked in, and there's no way nowhere for Trask to go, absolutely nowhere. Wait a second, oh my God. Oh no, oh no, oh 
Oh, no. Hey, 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 oh, hey. Kenny, 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 Kenny. I was just Mark. covered. Plum tree interjected himself into the match once again. I didn't hear it. Kenny J better pay attention to business. The referee is continuing the count. Wait a minute. Plum tree's got his leg. No, come on. Oh, no. No. Oh. I don't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny J failed to get back into the ring by the count of 10. Your winner is J.B. Trask. Well, that is one very angry and a very justifiably angry sodbuster, Kenny J. This was a dirty ripoff. I want a rematch with this, J.B. And I want that dumbbell out of here. This so-called man. Plumtree did again what he does best. Stuck his nose in, slapped Kenny J, and Kenny, I guess, made a fatal mistake. Kenny J and JB Trask were in the ring, but Mortimer Plumtree won the match. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming back to the Cato. Kenny J still likes being in the limelight, and I don't think that will ever end. He, oh, Italy. He promises when he's 60, but I don't know. <laughs> It was totally a rip-off, but I'm not done with him yet. I'm not done with him. I'm, I'm coming back. And I don't care how I get him. There's no referee or anything. I'm coming back. You got my word on that. Okay? See ya. made possible in part by Target Stores, Dayton's, and Mervyn's through the Dayton Hudson Foundation, the Northwest Area Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by the St. Paul Companies, providing insurance products and services throughout the world.